we asked you to have, maybe have a pencil and paper. Um, I say that to my kids and they look like I'm in prehistoric times. But anyway, it might be your um, handheld device or a computer or something. Oh, there's some pencils out there. That's awesome. Oh, all right. <laughs> I don't feel so alone now. Um, and uh, just freely write down, if you said, I am a commitment to, not I'm committed to something, and we use that language, may, which may seem a little bit awkward to you, as a way of you owning you are the commitment. You are becoming the commitment yourself, and that's how people see you. You're, you're a commitment to building trust with your team. You're a commitment to building more intimacy with your partners. You are a commitment to writing this book, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I am a commitment to, and just kind of write freely and um, uh, put them on the chat. Let me offer one thing here too. Um, you can start with the question, what do I care about? Right? Who or what do I care about? If that also helps you evoke what is it you want to you know, put, in your, put in your rudder. You can think of a declaration as a rudder. Yeah, <clears throat> or the vision you want to keep practicing moving toward. So we'll, we'll, we'll give you a few seconds here. I'm a commitment to cultivating community. I'm a commitment to joy. I'm a commitment to being a powerful, compelling leader. Great. So there's a number of things coming through the chat here. Um, I'll just share one of mine while we're here. I've held a, a declaration for about the last 15 years of I'm a commitment to bring the transformative power of practice to serve social and environmental justice movements. That has taken many forms over the last 15 years, but it's a commitment that I can keep steering myself by. Do you have one you want to share? Every day when I do my practices, I speak to commitments. The first commitment is one that has a shorter horizon of time. And the other one is how I view at this stage my purpose in life. So one of my commitments that is uh, close in horizon of time is that I'm going to finish my next book this year. Now, even as I say that, I feel this little kind of chill going through me and what are people going to say? So expect those, that kind of aliveness to be there. And my, my, my universal commitment is that to really live in the greater will, really surrender and live into the greater will. That means that maybe it means I'm a little bit tired of myself and how do I draw on some more powerful, deeper wisdoms to really guide me through this chapter of my life. So with your declarations, with being a little bit more connected to what it is that you care about, we get to go into practice. Practice. Perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> um, and um, I, I say that jokingly because I am really a 95% person. Let's get really close to it, get it done, let's move on. Um, and we're going to introduce two practices for you, really a a practice to help you get present so you know that in your body, that you're present now, your body, mind, uh, that you are connected to what matters to you, your commitment, your purpose, and, and um, you're open. You're open. You're, you're widening yourself. You're, you're allowing the world to touch you, and you're allowing yourself to touch the world. The second one is a rowing practice. We call it rowing. And it's actually from the uh, Aikido discipline, martial art discipline, uh, uh, traditional Japanese arts. And it's how do you move from center? So if you're able, let yourself stand, clear a little space around you, and we'll join you. Also, if um, given your space or just body comfort, you need to practice seated, it's fine to practice seated too. Okay, good, good. And uh, like Stacy said, if it's uncomfortable, you're not able right now, go ahead and stay seated. Uh, we practice in the beginning standing because 
it's much easier to feel our whole form standing. And what we're going to do is we're going to fundamentally bring our attention to the life of the body. What does that mean? That, move, that means moving away from thinking about what's for lunch, what are all those emails piling up, um, what am I going to do in the rest part of the uh, epidemic here that I'm in, pandemic, and then going to the back in the history of what am I lamenting about or what did I do better. So if we feel our body, that will help bring us into the present moment. And we're going to start by feeling ourselves along length. We'll then go to width and then depth and then the organizing principle. These four dimensions are in all living things, from cells to plants to humans to giraffes. So when we're in our length, let's practice straightening and settling. So feel your soles of your feet, spread your toes, the crown of your head. And that's straightening, so the head is over the shoulders, the shoulders over the hips, the hips are over the knees, and the knees over the ankles. And we're settling by relaxing our eyes, bringing our attention behind our eyes. If our eyes are fixed, if we're always in our head thinking, they get more and more rigid. What begins to happen is that that transfers through the optic nerve to the brain, down through the central nervous system, and we live in a low grade chronic tension. Eyes are relaxed. You'll notice that is happening if your peripheral vision opens. Your jaws relax with the hinge, the chin, and your tongue. And for some of you, just let your arms be free. Maybe it's common to cross them in front or back. Just let your arms hang freely down from the shoulder girdle. And again, let's do this. Take a deep breath, bring your ears, your shoulders up to your ears. Deep breath, exhale, and let them drop. Feel, allow your breath to move into your abdomen. All of those things, teeth don't have to touch, eyes relax, the muscular system is re resting on the skeletal system. Uh, this all has to do with the design of the human biological form. Pelvic girdle, relaxing those muscles, you might feel your, your butt cheeks relaxing, the sphincter muscles, the thigh muscles are relaxed, resting on the bones. The knees are soft, and you can feel your feet on the floor. This is the human form. We stand in this way, and we're in our full dignity. Now from the feet, let's work up from the feet. Bring your attention down to your feet. Just feel how they are. If it's hard to, you want to wiggle in there, move around. Feel free. So, toes are spread. Come up to your knees. Are you balanced left and right in the knees? In width. So centering in width this way. And at your hips. Maybe while you're starting to do this, maybe tighten the jaw again, or you squinch the eyes. So just continue sweeping through the body, relaxing at the rib cage, the shoulders, and your head's on straight. And you can feel your clothes on the outside of your body. You can actually extend your attention. Energy follows attention. The clothes on the outside of your body. If you're with somebody else in the room, can you feel them? Or can you feel the plants in your room? Are your cat or your dog, your goldfish, parakeet, what other living forms are there? Length, we're connected to our, so, our, our moral and spiritual vision with our feet on the floor. Horizontal plane, we're connecting to the world and other beings in the world. 
Now let's go to our depth. So let's start in the whole back body, which we often forget with so many senses in front and holding our, our handheld devices in front. Come back and settle back in, into yourself. Hold backs of the legs, the hips. There's two long muscles next to the spine. Relaxing back into yourself. Most of you have a big dinosaur tail. Now bring your attention to through your torso, coming out to the front. The whole ventral side is open. Your eyes are facing forward. So in our depth, we have our history, our teachers, those who cared for us, the way we've healed ourselves, the way we've contributed to the world. In front, we're, we're monitoring what is the best possible future for us, and how can I meet that with both a skilled action and a very open heart. Now, put your left thumb in your belly button and rest your palm just below that. Doesn't matter about the left or right, but what I want you to do is to feel the sensation of the hand in the belly, feel the sensation of the belly as it touches the hand. That's your center of gravity. Now go ahead and drop your hand, but keep your attention dropped. And that commitment that you have that you wrote down, I have a commitment to. Feel, sense, or imagine that you're seeing that right at your center. That's your North Star. That's your guiding light. Check by doing this very short centering practice, how did it shift your mood? How did it shift any images coming up? How did it shift how you feel. Now let's put our left foot forward, right foot's back. There's about a bit difference between the like railroad tracks, right foot is pointing to two o'clock and we're going to row, we're going to move from center. So keeping this vertical line, keeping yourself over your center of power, move the center forward. Take these oars right here, like you're standing rowing, and row back, hands to the hips. Forward, back, forward, back. This is like you're rowing for your commitment. You're rowing for those that can't row. In breath, out breath, engaging your ground, your legs, your feet. When I say change, bring your right foot next to your left foot and take your left foot back and keep rowing. Don't think about it, just trust your body. And change. In that change, we want to drop. We're practicing to embody in our nervous system, or your spirit, if you will, that under transition or change, we deepen, we drop into ourselves. We don't rise up in all those waves and change and change every time. And hold. Let's just stand for one second here and just feel. The breath is running a little bit more, let it run. There's more sensation parts of your body, just being with that, making the blend with that, as Stacy said. Thank you for being in practice together.